We're just going to have a look at some technical features of photo that may not be immediately obvious, but can prove immensely useful when you're getting to grips with the software and developing your own workflow with it. If you rely heavily on brushwork, Photo's Live Brush Preview helps massively for productivity. Basically, any combination of brush, layer opacity, and layer blend mode you choose will be previewed instantly as you hover over your document before you actually commit any brush strokes. This gives you the ability to experiment until you find your desired result, without having to constantly apply the brush strokes, then undo them if they're not right. Following on from this, editing gradients and colour fills is also accomplished in real time. The fluidity of performing these changes should encourage you to experiment with different colours and blending options. Photo's RAW conversion, which is presented as the Develop Persona, provides some extra flexibility tucked away for those who want more control over their RAW processing. As well as being able to choose between multiple RAW decoders, you can also choose whether or not to apply a tone curve. Now, disabling the tone curve will display a tonally flatter representation of the image, which allows you to further pull back highlights and shape the tonal range how you see fit. So you can really make the most of the extra precision that RAW files offer you. Photo offers a very fast undo history that allows you to quickly scrub through every operation performed and evaluate the progress made. You can also save documents with the history intact, which means that no operation is ever truly destructive and every step you take is saved. Because of how the image information is handled, loading and editing large documents is a smooth, painless process. You can zoom into, pan around and edit documents that are greater than 300 megapixels in size at a fluid 60 frames per second, or in fact higher if you have a high refresh rate monitor. Live filter layers are an exciting concept. Essentially, they behave like adjustment layers, so you can hide and show them, mask them, blend them, and reorder them. They perform distortions, sharpening, blurring, and other filter operations in real time, all operations that typically have been destructive operations on pixel layers before now. Photo handles conversions between color formats very well, and, as a result of this, certain adjustments offer you the option to jump into a different colour format without having to convert the entire document. For example, you can edit curves in an RGB document as if it were in lab, and vice versa. Working with embedded documents is a fluid process. They are presented as layers, and you can double-click them to open them in a separate tab or window. Any edits made to the embedded document are reflected in real time. If you choose to work in separated mode, you'll see these real time changes more clearly. Setting up a document for frequency separation is very easy. Rather than spending time duplicating pixel layers and trying to find a good balance between the high and low pass layers, you can simply choose the frequency separation filter from the filters menu. Photo will then allow you to adjust the relationship between the two layers on the fly, as well as providing feature protection if you need it. Applying the filter automatically splits the pixel layer into two separate high and low pass layers, meaning you can start work immediately. All filters, destructive and non-destructive, work in 16-bit as well as 8-bit mode. If you prefer to work in 16-bit precision, then you have access to the full range of Photos filter functionality, and they will take advantage of the extra precision offered in 16-bit. When working with raster layers, nothing is ever permanently rasterized when it is transformed. In compositing, for example, if you shrink a layer, you can then enlarge it at a later date without losing quality. The transforming is all done on the fly. The same applies to vectors. 
They are never rasterized, so you can apply all manner of raster-based effects and filters to them whilst maintaining their editability. Finally, Photo has some powerful stacking options, but it's also easy to get started with a new stack. You simply create a new stack from the file menu, add your images, and they are automatically aligned and placed into a grouped stack for you. You can then show or hide individual images and change the stacking operator. Given that stacking is so easy to set up and use, it should hopefully encourage people to experiment with using it for object removal, long exposure simulation, noise reduction, and exposure blending. So there we go, just a quick look at some of Photo's lesser known but equally valuable features. If you have any questions, please do ask on the Affinity forums, and don't forget to check out the other video tutorials. Thank you for watching.